What about foods that don't come with a nutrition label? Because nutrition information is not always available to us, especially when we are buying fresh foods or eating out, it is important to know which foods contain a specific amount of carbohydrates and how much is a normal serving. So which foods are high in carbohydrates? First, we have foods that are made from grains such as breads, rice, cereals, and pasta. Approximately one slice of bread from a regular store-bought loaf equals one carbohydrate serving, regardless of the type of bread, unless it is a sweet bread, such as banana bread or a cinnamon bread. Rolls, buns, and bagels are often two servings of carbohydrates. One third cup of cooked rice or one half cup of cooked pasta also counts as a serving of carbohydrate. Fruits are naturally sweet and also count as a carbohydrate. For fruits such as a medium-sized apple, peach, pear, or orange, each of these count as one serving of carbohydrate. Bananas contain more carbohydrates, so one half of a medium-sized banana is a serving of carbohydrate. As for other fruits, 15 grapes, 1 cup of cantaloupe or honeydew melon, 1 and 1 fourth cup of watermelon, 1 cup of raspberries, and 3 fourths cups of blueberries or blackberries counts as one carbohydrate serving. For most fruit juices, such as orange or apple, one half cup of juice counts as a carbohydrate serving. But for prune or grape juice, just one third cup is a serving. That means if you drink a full eight ounce glass of these juices, or one cup, you will consume three of your daily carbohydrate servings. Most dairy products also contain carbohydrate. Eight ounces or one cup of milk or yogurt counts as one carbohydrate serving. It is healthier to eat or drink low-fat or fat-free dairy products such as our skim milk. It is also important to note that some vegetables are high in carbohydrate including corn, peas, plant and plantains. Winter squash such as acorn squash or pumpkin potatoes, sweet potatoes, and kidney-shaped beans, such as pinto beans, lima beans, great northern beans, and kidney beans. One half cup of corn or peas and one third of a plantain count as a carbohydrate serving. One third of a cup of kidney-shaped beans also count as a carbohydrate serving. One small but three ounce potato, such as a red potato, is a carbohydrate serving. That means a large baked potato can be as much as three or four servings of carbohydrate all by itself. The potato shown is almost nine ounces, which would be equivalent to three servings of carbohydrate. Some vegetables are a good choice in general when trying to balance out a meal with other foods that are higher in carbohydrates. Three cups of salad, which include many different vegetables, count as a carbohydrate serving. So this is a good way to feel satisfied from a controlled carbohydrate meal. Some good salad choices are lettuce, spinach, carrots, peppers, cucumbers, celery, tomato, and radishes. If you feel like you're not getting enough food because you're limiting your serving size of a higher carbohydrate food, these vegetables are a great way to fill yourself up. The bag of salad shown contains six cups, which would be equal to two servings of carbohydrates. Now let's move on to proteins and fats. Proteins should make up about 10 to 35 percent of your total daily calories. The appropriate amount for you depends on your individual characteristics and activity. It is especially important to contact your healthcare provider about your protein intake if you have any kind of kidney disease. Protein sources include meats such as chicken, beef, pork, and fish, as well as eggs. According to this chart, 
For a 2,000 calorie diet, six daily protein servings are recommended. One protein serving is one ounce of meat or one egg. For reference, a pack of playing cards is about the size of three ounces of meat, which would be three servings of protein. It is important to choose mostly lean meats. If you are eating chicken, eat white meat such as chicken breast instead of dark meat such as the drumstick because white meat has a lower fat content. It is also important to remove the skin because it has a high fat content also. For beef, it is best to choose leaner cuts such as sirloin or flank steak. Also for ground beef, ground round tends to be leaner. The package should tell you the fat content by percent. Those that are 90% lean or higher are healthiest. The ground beef shown is 96% lean. Other meat choices such as pork chops, processed meat such as sausages, bacon, ribs, and fatty cuts of beef should be eaten on a very limited basis due to their high fat content. Regardless of the type of meat you choose, all visible fat should be trimmed off before cooking. Also how we cook our meat is important since breading, using batter or frying in butter or oil can add both carbohydrates and fat. The best way to cook meat is to grill, broil, bake, or boil it. Remember gravies and sauces add additional calories and fat. Now we will move on to fats. It is important to consume fats in moderation. One gram of fat equals nine calories, which is over twice that found in carbohydrates and protein. For a food to be considered healthy in terms of its fat content, no more than one third of its total calories should come from fat. We can calculate this together to give you an idea how to determine this. There are 1.5 grams of fat and 110 calories in a serving of our cereal. To calculate percent of fat, take the grams of fat in a serving of the food as found on the label and multiply it by 9 to get the total calories from fat. So for this cereal we take 1.5 grams and multiply it by 9 and we see that 13.5 of the 110 calories in one cup of this cereal comes from fat. Now we take the 13.5 and multiply it by 3, which is 40.5. We will then compare this number to our total number of calories in the food. We want this to be less than the total number of calories in order to be considered healthy in terms of fat content. Since 40.5 is less than the 110 calories in a serving of cereal, we know that our cereal has a healthy fat content. Just because a food has a high fat content doesn't mean you can't ever eat it. It just means you want to limit how often you choose to splurge on that food and also limit how much of it you eat at one sitting. On a day when you eat a high fat food, you should try to balance it with foods that are lower in fat. Looking at our chart, if we are eating 2,000 calories, we should consume no more than six servings of fat per day. One serving of fat is equivalent to a teaspoon of oil or butter. Some other examples of a serving of fat would be two teaspoons of peanut butter, one tablespoon of cream, or one-eighth of an avocado. For reference, one teaspoon is about the size of the tip of the thumb, there, and there are three teaspoons in a tablespoon. To reiterate, it is important to contact a healthcare provider to find what specific diet plan is best for you. It is also important to focus on a well-balanced diet and to make small changes that you can stick with. Carbohydrates and fats are not bad for you. In fact, they are very important to your health, but they need to be eaten in a controlled amount. Two good resources to obtain nutrition facts and other helpful tools are www.mypyramid.gov and www.calorieking.com. These are especially helpful if you don't have a food label for reference or are eating out at a restaurant. This concludes this presentation. 
If you have questions or require further information, please contact your health care provider.